You're watching my good fiend, Roger Walker, on Slasher Pepper. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another video on the Dr. Pepper Diner. Today I'm going to be reviewing Tales from the Crypt, the 70s movie. And um, this is one of my all-time favorites. This is a great anthology flick. Uh, from 1972, released by Amicus. Uh, they did a lot of horror anthologies back in the 70s and late 60s, like Asylum, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, Torture Garden, The House That Drugged Blood, so, uh, and also this sequel, The Vault of Horror. So they did a lot of cool horror stuff, mostly anthologies. I don't think they did a full feature film uh, without anthologies and stuff. Okay, just an editor's note here, but did you just see that? Did you see that frame like this? What is that? I... Does anyone recognize who these people are over here? Because the one below looks like Kirsten Ritter from Breaking Bad or something, but the one above, I have no idea what this is, and I have no idea how it got there for like one frame, so someone please inform me uh, why this happened and who the, those people are. Thank you. But it's all good stuff. Like, the movies I've seen are amazing. I really like Amicus. They did some really cool movies uh, back back then. Now, I'll just start off by reading the synopsis for this film. Five strangers get lost in a crypt and, after meeting the mysterious crypt keeper, receive visions of how they will die. That is kind of a weird synopsis because that's not really true. That's not really what happens. They don't find out how they will lie they basically find out like spoiler alert but they um actually find out how they died because they already did die and then later there's a plot twist that they could go to hell so that they're kind of in a waiting room to hell so that's kind of a misleading synopsis but i guess um you're supposed to believe that before the plot twist that they already did die um, and go to hell. Now this movie is kind of overshadowed by the uh, 90's TV series and uh, movie Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight and Bordello of Blood which is a shame because this is a really great movie that a lot more people should talk about honestly because it's it's really great it's actually really good. I've seen it a lot of times already I even did a Dr. Pepper drinking game on this one yeah I watch this one all the time. I've also read the novelization to this film it's also really great, which you've already seen in my novelization collection video, if you've seen that. Oh, wow. I just love this paperback. Like, it's so 70s. Just look at the colors. <laughs> it's all turned yellow. Like, this, this cover is better than the VHS cover, that's for sure. <laughs> and I mean, the plot twist is kind of predictable. I'm not sure if I predicted it before the ending when I saw it for the first time. I don't think I did. I think I uh, it was actually a surprise for me the first time, but I'm not sure if it would still be a surprise if I watched it now. Um, but yeah, the plot twist is great. I really I really dig it. It's uh, a fun plot twist, and it has like a cool effect in near the end when the guy's falling into the flames, which is a really 70s effect. But for a low budget film like this, it's a pretty good effect actually. So the first segment is and all through the house, which is also adapted in Tales from the Crypt. Um, this is the VHS I have, which actually features an all through the house, like you can see it over here. There that one. Uh, and that one is directed by Robert Zemeckis, and I gotta admit, since I've seen the TV show now, the TV episode is a lot better. And the look of the Santa is better there than here, because this episode he just looks like a guy, a bald guy without any weird features like this, you know. Like this look is more iconic, that's that's for sure. After that you get a reflection of death, which is kind of a fun one. The guy dies and then gets alive again, which is pretty fun. It's like a dream and then he finds out it's not a dream. Then he is his, he turns into a zombie and then he goes to find his, his wife, I guess, or fiance that he was with the moment he died, but then he finds out it's like a few years later, which is actually really fun. I actually really dig that uh, segment, but it's it's probably the weakest out of all of them because it's kind of like 
it's a dream, but it's not a dream, and then that's kind of lame. But other than that, I really dig it. The makeup effects on the, like when he screams and sees his reflection is kind of poor, poorly made. Uh, but other than that, I really dig that segment. The third segment is Poetic Justice, and this is probably my favorite segment in this movie. <coughs> because... <coughs> Because you have this guy that's played by Peter Cushing, and it's weird what kind of role he plays in this movie. Like, it's something you wouldn't expect from Peter Cushing. Like, usually he's the villain, like Dracula or something, or Star Wars. Uh, but in this movie, he's like a homeless guy that's actually really sad. <laughs> he's really nice to kids and stuff, and gives them presents and whatnot, but... Um, the parents don't really believe that and actually turn their back on him and want him out of the village, you know. So on Valentine's Day, this disgusting, annoying, piece of shit guy sends him a Valentine cards that are extremely mean against him. And basically he decides to kill himself. And when he does that, he comes back to life later. He's a zombie and... He goes off to the guy that sent the Valentine cards, and he's, he basically has a letter for Valentine, uh, Valentine's letter, and then there's like a little rhyme, I'm not sure what it was again, um, but it basically says, you have no heart, but where heart is, it's the heart of his friend. So that's a really fun scene. I really dig that, that's definitely my favorite one. It's kind of like how they did that in... My Bloody Valentine, uh, where you have a scene where he jumps out of nowhere from behind and there's like this heart-shaped thing and there's actually a heart in it, you know, I really like that. Then you have Wish You Were Here, uh, which is also a fun one, but kind of dumb. Like, on the ending it turns pretty dumb, because, um, but it's, it's still really enjoyable. But basically you have this uh, wife, then they find out they <laughs> bought something and had a wish which is kind of lame, like you bought it and now you find out you have three wishes with that like a year or months later and now you find out you can do three wishes which is honestly pretty dumb but other than that it's a cool scene and then basically you wishes uh, to get rich the woman wishes if she, <laughs> that she could get rich but then her husband dies and her husband was rich so that's basically the consequence uh, of of her wish. <laughs> then later she... I'm not sure what she wishes the second time actually. Um, but at least the third or last wish is like, I wish he could live forever. But he lives in the moment uh, that he died. So basically he's in a lot of pain. And she said, I wish he could live forever. Which is honestly dumb too. She would have just said, I wish he could just live or I wish it ju could just be like it was before with him, um, but she doesn't for some reason, which is honestly pretty lame. Uh, but other than that, I kind of like it because there's no other way to do that. I'm honestly curious to see how this went in the comics. But basically, he's trapped in hell. Like, he is in so much pain and he can't get out of there because she wished he could um, live forever, so... At this moment, that you're watching this, he's still in a lot of pain. So yeah, that sequence is kind of fun. Um, although there are some pretty dumb decisions in that one. And the last one is also a really good one. It's called Blind Alleys. It's in like a blind institution. And the blind people basically get treated like shit. They have food that is absolutely disgusting. While the boss that gets all the money and, and stuff for this institution is all rich and has like uh, a lot of money and all the food, all, all good food. Basically the blind people turn their back on him because they are done. They don't want to be treated like this anymore, they want better food and later they lock him up and don't give him food for days and they built sort of like a an alley with like razor blades uh, to the sides which is honestly also kind of weird. How do the blind people build that? It's, it's a massive thing, you know, the alley. It's really cool though. Kind of unrealistic how the blind people did that. Then they open his door and they also lock up his dog. And then he walks through the alley. Then later the door from the dog's room opens as well. And the dog is starving. Like, he didn't get any food as well. 
So basically the dog eats his master and his boss and the boss of the blind people, uh, which is which is really cool. Like that's that's a really fun sequence. That's also my that's probably my second favorite from this movie because that is a great sequence. I really love it. It's awesome. It's iconic. Like the imagery in this scene is phenomenal. And then the finale comes and they find out that they are basically in a room, in a waiting room to hell. That's really fun. I will really dig that uh, plot twist, basically. And it's it's really cool. And I can't recommend this movie enough. I recommend it all the time. Uh, especially, I would watch this, if you haven't seen the show yet, I would recommend watching this movie before you see that because then once you watch the show and realize that the episodes of these sequences are better because most of them really are but uh, like if you've seen this movie before and love it as much as I do you always will have a soft spot for this movie which I do that's why I wanted to cover this on the Dr. Pepper Diner this time Scream Factory released this Blu-ray with a uh, double feature with Tales from the Crypt and The Fall of Horror which is a sequel to this one, and uh, that's really great. I you can just pick that one up and uh, watch it. The quality on this Blu-ray is amazing, so I definitely recommend that. And uh, really, that's all I have to say for this one. And I'll uh, see you guys later. See ya. You're pissing me off, Roger. It's gonna be wild tonight.